So dear friends, I am here once again with you on this Shepherd's Voice. On this weekend, we have the sixth Sunday after Easter. We are almost close to the Pentecost. And Jesus has a beautiful message for us in today's Gospel. John chapter 14, verse 23 to 21. Peace I leave to you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. And let not your hearts be troubled. Neither be afraid. Because I will become and be with you. Beautiful message of Jesus. The last discourse before he went for his suffering, crucifixion and death. Jesus calls the disciples and tries to give them the assurance of peace. You know, peace is what we want. Peace is what we are hungering for. The whole world is hungering for peace. Whenever there is war, whenever there is destruction, even in small communities when there are frightful situations, we crave for peace. Shanti, we call it. And Jesus says, I am the one who gives you the peace. And the peace that Jesus gives is not just silence. You know, sometimes there could be war outside, but I could be in a noiseless room and say that there is peace here. Or sometimes during the war, you know, it is called truce. One day or two days, they stop fighting, they stop shooting. And after second days, perhaps it's worse than before. This is no peace. The real peace comes from inside, from inside our heart, from the soul. And the real author of peace is God himself. No human beings can make peace of themselves. We are always troubling, we are always struggling. We have anger, we have passion, we have hatred, we have enmity among us. But God gives us peace. And the peace that God gives is everlasting is everlasting. This is the message of this Sunday, which we try to keep up in our day. In fact, the first reading gives an example of how peace can be done also. You know, in the earliest church, the church of the apostles, today's reading is from Acts. And there is dissension, there is difficulty among the different communities that Paul and the others are preaching. There are Greeks, there are Jews, there are Gentiles, the Gentiles are new Christians. We are, they are so hungering for the word of God. But then the Jews say that they are different, we are different. They speak a different language, we speak a different, perhaps a culture, we are from a different culture. And the apostles and Paul and Barnabas to Antioch to find out if there is a solution and they come out with a beautiful solution. The Gentiles are also the people of God. Let's be in peace with them. Let them do the minimum things that are required of religion, but the rest we can do. You know, and the second reading is from the book of Revelation that gives a picture of heaven. Heaven where the city of Jerusalem leading to heaven as it were, where there are 12 angels, there are 12 gates, there are 12 apostles and Jesus and the Holy Trinity reigning over every of them. This is the peace that God we are asking for. This is the peace that we are hungering for. So my dear brothers and sisters, perhaps it's a good time to pray for peace in your family, peace in your surroundings. First of all, just sort of ask each other, are we really at peace? Are we just maintaining silence in between our fights? Or perhaps have we the heart to forgive each other and be at peace? I now lead you up to a little problem of the Christian community that we are having these days, what's called the anti-conversion bill. And you know, on Monday this week, we, a delegation of the Christians, a few of them, because we could not take many to the governor, the bishops were there, some people were there, and we impressed upon the governor we gave him a memorandum to say that the promulgation of the what we call the ordinance that has been recommended by the cabinet, Karnataka cabinet, may not be the right thing. 
and the Karnataka governor perhaps in his all his magnanimity he could also reject or send back the ordinance to the cabinet once again we have impressed upon the governor and the governor is like the father figure of the whole Karnataka he is about the government and therefore he can advise the government as what is good and what is not perhaps good enough and for this perhaps the governor needs to take a strong stand because he is not for a particular party he is not for a particular group he is he is for the whole state and therefore he needs to be neutral and we have been impressed upon the governor that there is no need of this bill because we christians are not all out to make convert the people as they are we are surely we are not going to stop our preaching we are not stopping our proclamation our propagation as enshrined in the constitution article number 25 we will continue to do it as regards conversion surely the fraudulent methods or forceful methods will never be used and we will also control elements in our community in order to not to give a scandal to the others so that is why we told the karnataka governor that you know there are beautiful things about christianity we have the best schools in the whole city the about the 600 schools of our diocese the religious the protestants there are so many schools of ours and surely not a single case of conversion has been reported in any of our institutions if this is the case what's the need of the the law regulating conversions anti conversion bill so we request the governor to use his good office in order to stop this bill being for forwarded or promulgation of the of the the act that is been asked of the governor that it did not be carried on we open pray the governor was very much comfortable he gave us a good welcome in fact the timing that he gave us there was during lunch time which means that he had his priorities and preference for us and we are happy that he received it we look forward to his stopping this bill being passed into an ordinance i now take you to what we call the bible in our life the bible is an important book the bible is a word of god and we perhaps take it as our source book a book of inspiration a book of life the regional bible commission is conducting a two day workshop on the bible especially for our lay people to give them insights into the bible this this two day input will be in canada in nbclc on the 28th and 29th of may conducted by expert priests who come from different places and we also invite the participants from every diocese about 10 have been called and bangalore surely more can participate and make use of these our bible instructions in order to begin a biblical journey of your own life you know father vijay raj is the secretary of the commission his you will see his name address and perhaps the number that you have to contact and he is the one who will be conducting this course please attend and encourage also the others to come e namma yerdu divasada shibira bible shibira kannadalli irudu mattu namma namma rajyada ella kadeyinda baruvanta janarige mattu visheshavagi bible dalli aasakti iddavarige idu baala upayuktavaguvudu ಮೇ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೆಂಟು ಮತ್ತು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ತನೇ ತಾರೀಕಿನ ದಿವಸ ಮುಂಜಾನೆ ಒಂಬತ್ತರಿಂದ ಸಂಜೆ ಆರುವರೆಗೆ ಮತ್ತು ಬೇಕಾದರೆ ಹೊರಗಿನವರಿಗೆ ದೂರಿಂದ ಬರುವವರಿಗೆ ಸ್ಥಳಾವಕಾಶ ಮತ್ತು ಇರಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಕೂಡ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ಮಾಡಲಾಗುವುದು ಈ ನಮ್ಮ ಎರಡು ದಿವಸದ ಶಿಬಿರ ನಮ್ಮ ಎನ್ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಎಲ್ ಸಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಡೆಯುವುದು ಮತ್ತು ಮೇ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೆಂಟು ಮತ್ತು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ತನೇ ತಾರೀಕು ಪಾದ ವಿಜಯ್ ರಾಜೆ ನಮ್ಮ ರೀಜನಲ್ ಬೈಬಲ್ ಕಮಿಷನ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟ್ರಿ ಅವರ ಹೆಸರು ಮತ್ತು ನಂಬರ್ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಅದು ತೋರಿಸಲಾಗಿದೆ ತಾವು ಅವರಿಗೆ ತಿಳಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಈ ಕೋರ್ಸಿಗೆ ಬರಬಹುದು ಐ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ 
vocations which i have spoken once again last week and this week on the 27th of this month we will be having interviews for those who would like to be, join the seminary of the archdiocese anyone who has passed or appeared for sslc puc or even graduates are welcome to enter uh, to come for this interview and perhaps god willing you will be part of our archdiocese you know we need good priests we need priests who give their life for the people we need priests who are ready to work in the missions we need priests who can be the heads of our institutions so as to mold our children and other inmates of our institutions also into people of god and that is why we need to have more and more priests and i encourage the vocations of our archdiocese you know we lost a very great priest of our archdiocese on the 12th of this month and he was buried on the 17th of this month father jo francis he was a tall personality he was tall himself and as a priest he stood about the others he was a really good pastor he was also a professor in st peter's seminary for almost 40 45 years he has given of his best and many of the priests that are in of our archdiocese were his students so my dear brothers and sisters and especially my dear parents i request you to encourage your sons and daughters to offer themselves for the service of the church surely the vocations are there we only have to encourage them and so please send your children for these our interviews on 27th of may and the for the sisters uh, there are so many congregations that are waiting to receive our girls i now take you to the questions there are beautiful questions this time there are two questions the first question is can there be a uniform for first holy communion and confirmation children and also the choir I mean, there's a small remark made by this person. Currently, even the readers are not wearing the uniform that was implemented pre-COVID days. Why? First of all, the uniform for the first Holy Communion, the confirmation children, etc. Do we need a uniform? Perhaps the church doesn't say that you need a uniform as such. The children have to be modestly dressed, and many of them are dressed in the white dress. they look like angels i know yesterday when i went to a parish i told them you look like angels today because so beautifully they are dressed in their white holding the candle etc but i think what the person wants to know is should we have a uniform type of dress for everybody for the first communion communion children and also the confirmation children i would say it would be a good idea it would be a good idea not to say as a uniform as such but something modest something white something that denotes the importance of the sacrament at the same time it is available it is cheap i would say because i have seen in some parishes there are some dresses that are worn by the children which are i am sure they are very very costly they look like brides of course but to make the brides dresses for the children it's not so easy and children being children when they are in the church everyone looks at each other and you can't make our children feel small by seeing that some others are wearing better dresses so therefore there is a sort of a, a unhealthy competition among the people and the children demanding from their parents i want this dress i want that dress and if only the parents could afford it i know that many parents cannot afford it they take loans to prepare the, the children's dresses and many a time it's disappointing because they use it for only one day i don't think they can use it another day within 2 3 months or perhaps within 6 months the, the dresses don't fit the children they have already grown up and it's a big big waste and for those who can afford perhaps i don't say much but for those who cannot afford surely i think we have to think of a way of solving this problem so that the children look nice they look angelic they look white but their dresses are simple and cheap you know i have a solution i have a solution i show you this dress worn by this child 
that is there you see on the screen it looks beautiful and this dress you know where i i found it i found it in the parish of st peter's at rustumbag when monsignor jainathan was the parish priest he understood the problem of the people the rich and the poor they have to be equal he said and surely the children should be dressed well look angelic and so he made this dress and i asked him once no please give me one dress which i can recommend it to the diocese and i think there is lot of meaning in that even if you have any dresses you can wear over it there is no need of all the frills and all the things that are there i mean if you can afford i don't stop you but for the poor children or maybe for all the children in the parish it could be a sort of a uniform for confirmation a type of uniform for the first holy communion that you don't spend much but you look angelic and surely whether we need uniform like this i would say i would be happy the church doesn't prescribe any uniform as such so also there's a mention of the choir i think that's a good point here that the choir is dressed well and if there is a particular type of dress that the particular choirs would like to use it's nice I mean I see the women in their beautiful sarees I feel so happy or perhaps some modest dress a modest type of uniform the person is mentioned perhaps when we are reading we put that outer gown which looks nice perhaps uh, some sort of a dress code for your parish for the choir for the children who are being prepared for confirmation and communion would be very much in place the second question that is asked is here why are the people buried facing east and the priest buried facing west i don't know what is the east and west in the church side but you know the when the priest are buried or brought to the church for service their heads are pointed towards the altar whereas when the people are the people are brought for the funeral the funeral mass the body is placed with a with a face on the people side and so the person is asking why is there a distinction or difference or is it something special or something as far the church tradition is normally in any liturgical assembly the priest celebrant exercises his priestly office facing the faithful or the people you have seen when the priests start their mass they are looking at the people and therefore when they are dead they also their face is kept on the altar side so that their face also is presented to the people as such whereas the lay faithful faithful exercise their common priesthood it's not that we are making distinction as such the lay people are also common priesthood that they participate and they face the altar or the celebrant they are looking at the priest or the celebrant so also at death at the burial the same position is retained that is priest facing the people or his body his remains facing the people and the faithful facing the altar the remains of the people facing the altar so this is the explanation that i can give you and my dear brothers and sisters thank you very much please continue praying for us as i pray for you and surely on this sunday that as you gather to exchange some peace among you even if you are not at peace please say sorry perhaps make a gesture of peace among you because god loves peace you know mother teresa is to say a smile begins a peace a peace gesture when you smile it's already half the peace that is established between you provided your smile is sincere and your peace intent is from your heart god bless you my dear friends please do share your feedback your impressions and your experience or send a message to the email address as you find on the screen archdblr@gmail.com and you also have the phone number the mobile number wherein you can send your message or uh, whatsapp on this number archbishop is ready and waiting to answer your questions if you have any question any doubt any uncertainty or 
there is no clarity upon something, you can ask those questions and with the discretion that the Archbishop will surely answer these questions in the weekly feature Shepherd's Voice. Thank you and we look forward to the next episodes.